Hey guys, so I'm going to do a video today just describing some reasons and kind of guidelines on naming uh, new morphs, combos, uh, what you will, what you got uh, going on. And really, some people are going to like this video, some people are going to hate this video, you're going to agree with it, you're going to disagree with it. It's real, this, this is why we don't have guidelines for it because um, you know, everybody's got a different opinion and that's fine. Everybody is definitely entitled to their opinions. Um, there's three basic reasons why you would name it. Number one, the name makes it easier. Say you have a five gene morph and it's a blah 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 when you could just say one word um, that everybody can associate with that that makes it a lot easier. Um, now you know that's the main reason for me that you name a morph so that, you, that that name can then equal a a much more complex gene and it's easier for everybody to identify to. Um, <clears throat> the other reason uh, that you could do it is uh, a lot of people do it is ego. Um, ego, respect, uh, you know, somebody's been working on a project or a new line and they really want recognition for it and one of the best ways to get recognition uh, is to name a morph, you know, that's kind of what we all dream about is finding a new morph, um, maybe a new combo be the first to do that and name it, I mean, that's, that's a huge deal, you know, it's, 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 it's really cool to name something, so that's another reason that people tend to do that. And you know that could be whether it's new combo, new morph, or a new tangerine line, which I'm going to get to in just a little bit. You know, a little bit further down in the video. Um, now, the other reason is it might be a project or a new morph. To me, if you're saying it's a Reaper project, we'll say the Reaper project. It's not proven, but it's a project we're working on. So I don't care what you call it. If it's a project, if you're working on it, if you're not claiming it to be a new morph. Name it what you want. That's your. That's in your room, in, in your collection. I don't care if you name it the butterfly morph. That's yours. You know. So until you prove it out, and it's and then it can be widely accepted. Um, I don't care what name. If you put project after it, you're not claiming anything. So I think that's where the confusion comes. A lot of times, people put something up that might look a little different, and they don't put the word project after it. You know. So then everybody assumes. Well, it must be proven trait. They're trying to pass this off, and blah 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 blah. And then the arguments can ensue. So I think as long as people are are um, you know careful about saying, is it proven? And if it's proven, you better have the information to back that up. Is it recessive? Is it codominant? Is it dominant? Is it a polygenic trait? Is it a combo morph? So does it fall in one of those five categories? So you got to be careful when you're putting it out there. I know it's very 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 exciting to say. I got this new morph, this new pattern, this new color morph, or whatever it may be. So that's the problem where it lies. You have to prove it out. You have to keep the records. And uh, once all you got to do down the right avenues, if you go out and say, hey, I got this, I don't care what the heck you say, this is what it is, and you're very defensive about it, you're not sharing information, that's the big thing. Share the information. You're not going to get the respect on it if you didn't show that you did your due diligence to prove it. So this is a very interesting topic that you do see pop up from time to time and whether it's right, whether it's wrong to do uh, naming something or not, you know, as long as the name, you know, will actually work with the morph and you're not calling it something out in left field that people aren't going to, you know, associate together eventually, then it's just marketing. That And that is the, the third and final, which I'm finally getting to, the marketing aspect of why you would name a morph. Um, super snow eclipses are the perfect example of this. There's, you know, when they came out, it was a super snow eclipse. And this is not to knock Ron. I like Ron a lot, with a lot of respect. And he named it a galaxy. I guess the difference was there was a paradox spot on it. Um, that's obviously a lot of marketing. You can, you know, you can market stuff and, and sell the morph more. And then all of a sudden, you did see the price of super snow eclipses overnight start creeping up, which is very rare for a morph to go back up in value rather than come down just because of how these things produce. So you can actually see the marketing aspect that work, uh, which is kind of cool. And we need that. We need that in the market. Um, people to, to push things and really advertise things. And, and that's just good, you know, good all around. So I'm not necessarily against uh, putting a new name on something or calling it a project, whatever you want to do. Um, but like I said, you got to be, you know, good about what you're doing. Uh, you can't just say, oh look, there's a 
this black band on the tail is a little squirrely, or look, I, this came from this male that I called this male this name, so it's this male's line's name. Well, that's that's not new. It, that's just not new. It, it maybe be the genetics from that male. Like example would be if you buy from Steve. Steve's got Steve Sykes from Geckos Inc. has some really nice giants, and you can get some from the Godzilla line or some other lines. And obviously, Godzilla line is more expensive. Perfect example. That's he's charging more because the genetics are more rare, which makes sense. But it's not a new morph, and nor is he claiming it to be a new morph. I'm just trying to explain the difference between a line and a project. You can't say, well, it's a you know Picasso, you know Tremper, and then go ahead and that's you know a new morph for project. It's just from that specific animal, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not knocking that, but people have to understand it's not a new new animal. It's not a new morph. That's just a specific animal's line. Now, last but not least, I just want to touch upon tangerines. There's a million different lines of tangerines, and this comes back to the number two point, the ego and the respect. This is why people generally name tangerine lines. We have Infernos, there's Atomics, there's Bloods, uh, Pacific Greens, Electrics, uh, I'm sure I'm missing some of them. There's Sykes line. Um, every, you know, there's a line almost for every breeder. Uh, Gecko Genetics line, they're, they're, I'm sure I'm missing a few. Um, there are a bunch. So, but to me, you know, there are, every single line, no matter what it is, all those tangerine lines came from one set of tangerines, one or two set of tangerines. So, it's, they're not new. It's a different look. That breeder has put the work into that line. They've actually had an idea in their head this is what I want my tangerine to look like, this shade of orange or red, uh, this pattern or this clean hypo, and they put that together over years. So yes, it is, it is totally valid to say, you know what, I've worked on this line for seven, eight years, whatever number of years it is, and they look different from this tangerine. You could physically put them together and say, well, this blood looks different than this atomic, and they do. So that's okay. You know that, that that breeder should get respect and and due diligence for for what they have done, uh, if they do look different from the other ones. So I see I see no problems with that at all. Um, now there's going to be variants in every one. When you're dealing with a line bred trait like that, you're going to have some stellar examples. And you're going to have some samples samples that still look that nice. Um, and that's where I think the gray lines come in with this. They say, oh, that's not a blood or you know, that's not an inferno. Well, yeah, it's probably from that line, but it just you know, it's not a stellar example. It doesn't make that wrong. It doesn't make that, you know, you don't want to work with it. You could get some really nice animals from ones that don't look that nice. So that person might have got a heck of a bargain. So, you know, I hope this little blurb here, trying to, you know, I had this request uh, from Brian to talk a little bit about naming. The topic has come up in a couple uh, forms and uh, the blog. So I felt the need to just, you know, kind of give a little bit of what I think about when I'm naming something, like I said, it's a project first. It's always a project, and I got a bunch of projects in here, you know, stuff that I'm not gonna show you, and stuff that I'm probably not gonna even show pictures of till I'm pretty certain that it, it looks like it's something. And every breeder does. Every breeder's got a whole little, you know, this is my project, and they're not, they're gonna wait to show it to you. There's nothing wrong with calling it a project animal. It's when you go from that project to this is a new morph, you better have that in-between step. You better be able to tell us what it is, how it works, and how you can reproduce it, and that you can reproduce it. That's a very, very, very important step. And then the characteristics of that morph. So this takes years, folks, years. This doesn't just happen in, oh my God, I found this new one that has two bands on the tail instead of, you know, whatever number. You can't do it that way. So you really gotta take your notes. You gotta pay attention. It is the fun part of what we do. It should be encouraged instead of discouraged by arguing about this. Um, I think there should be some standardized guidelines, and I think us as a community should be able to put that down. Um, it's not a really hard concept to do, you know, not as far as what you name it, but just far, as far as what guidelines to hit to say now you could name it. Go ahead. Um, so I don't know. I'm just bouncing these ideas off the wall here and seeing what sticks, but that's what I think of when I'm working on something new before I show it to you guys out there. So I hope this quick little video uh, was informative to you guys when it comes to naming, why we do it, how we do it, um, at least how we do it. I know different people are going to have different opinions and that's okay. Uh, like I said, everybody is allowed to have their opinions as long 
as we can voice them professionally. So again, guys, I'm going to show you a video next. I think I'm going to do a little baby tour here, show you some baby stuff. So take care. Keep watching.